Right, we're thinking about disease and the causes of disease and the description of disease. And this is kind of an introduction before we go into details. So if you're already well advanced, you might want to skip this. But if you want to go through the basics, this is the video for you. So disease, dis, ease, a state of not being at ease. So anytime you're not at ease, then it's reasonable to say that you are diseased. And this can be as a result of a, a pathological process. Well, of course, it can be a result of trauma and injury. So really, there's those two causes of disease. Now, let's think about the basic terms. Physiology. Anatomy. So physiology is the study of normal body function. And when that goes wrong, as anatomy can go wrong, so when physiology goes wrong, we call the study of abnormal physiology pathophysiology. And when anatomy goes wrong, we call that pathology. So path means disease. Pathology is the study of. So path, path, disease, ology, the study of the study of disease, pathophysiology, the study of abnormal disease processes. So pathology has its origins in, in anatomy, the, the patient or the ex-patient, the, um, the, the corpse will be being dissected post-mortem or autopsy situation, and abnormal or abnormalities of anatomy would be identified, such as tumours or aneurysms or the presence of furred up blood vessels or whatever it is. The reason I like pathophysiology is that's kind of studying the living system. So in pathophysiology, the urine could be obstructed, for example, or the heart is not working properly, or the brain is not working properly. There's an abnormality of function within the body. That's the study of pathophysiology. And we can subdivide these, at, well, add more really. I mean, cytology, for example. Sight is cells. Ology, the study of cytology, the study of cells, histology, the study of tissues. And again, we can look at these in the abnormal situation. So cytology and histology. If we're talking about the abnormal, it would be cytopathology. looking at cells in the microscope to look for abnormalities such as pre-malignant changes or malignant changes, for example. And histology is the study of tissues. So a tissue is a group of cells with associated extracellular material. Uh, tissues make up you know, larger structures such as organs. So the study there will be histopathology. So we have these things that can go wrong. So they're the normal situations, they're the abnormal situations. What causes one to go to the other? Why do we have a normal situation becoming an abnormal situation? It's what we don't want. And the answer there is etiology. Now, etiology can be spelt without the A. The A is the English way. It doesn't matter. Etiology, etiology, whatever you want to call it, is that which changes physiology into pathophysiology or that which changes anatomy into pathology. It's what causes it to become abnormal. So etiology is that which causes disease. So disease is caused by an etiological factor working on the physiology or the anatomy to make it go wrong something's gone wrong, and then we have a state of not being at ease, we become diseased. So that's kind of the background of where we're coming from. Now, if we think about the etiology of disease, the causation of disease, whether you want to put the a on or not doesn't matter, the, the, the cause of disease. Now, there's basically two things here in the cause of disease. 
One is endogenous. And the other group of causes are uh, exogenous. Right, endogenous and exogenous. Now, endogenous comes from within the person. So here we have the person who's actually quite happy. I'm sure you can draw people much better than I can. So here's the person walking along. Now, endogenous disease will affect the person from within. These are factors within the person. Exogenous disease are things from outside that affect the well-being of the individual. So that, that's all it means. So really, when we're thinking about endogenous disease, disease that arises from within, the real true endogenous diseases are the genetic diseases. So endogenous is really we're talking about genetics. Diseases caused by genetics. Genetics is the study of the DNA and the chromosomes, the set of instructions that determine the structure and therefore the physiology of the body. So we're talking about genetics. But of course, it always gets more complicated. So we can talk about genetics which are determined. And this is very much the older view of genetics, that you're born with the genes you're born with. In fact, it goes right back to when you're a zygote. That very first fertilised cell that was you with the 46 chromosomes. So when one sperm fertilised one egg, you became a zygote. When you were very young, nine months before you were born, that's how you started off. But then... When the one sperm and the one egg were fertilised, that gave you a genome or a set of genetic material. And it used to be believed that that was determined, that that couldn't be changed. But we now know that there's epigenetics. Now, epigenetics is the way that environmental factors can influence gene expression. So it's quite possible to have um, two identical twins who um, were monozygotic. They have the same genetic material when they were a zygote. But the way their genes are expressed are influenced epigenetically. So epigenetic factors can turn genes on and off. And therefore, the way that the genes are expressed in the individual can be variable. So, for example, if children don't have enough food when they're a fetus and when they're a young child, then they're predisposed to obesity and um, hypertension and atherosclerosis in later life. It's an epigenetic factor. So there, is, there are these epigenetic factors and these, these are a whole range of environmental factors. So it's a bit complicated because it's not so much pure genetics these days as a combination of determined genetics and uh, epigenetic factors which influence how the genes are expressed. But it's still useful to think in the old fashioned terms of uh, autosomal. Still, it's still true, autosomal dominant conditions. So an autosomal dominant condition, uh, the autosomes are the non-sex chromosomes. So we have 46 chromosomes, 44 of those are autosomes. And a dominant condition is one which will be expressed if present. So if one parent has the condition, typically there's, there's a 50-50 chance that any children will have the same disorder or indeed the same genetic trait. Then there's autosomal recessive. The autosomal recessive disorders will only be expressed in the absence of a dominant gene and typically both parents need to carry the recessive gene and one in four of their children will suffer from the condition or demonstrate that trait. If you want more details on these, there are, there are videos that go into these in much more detail. Then we could talk about chromosomal disorders. 
chromosomal disorders, disorders of um, chromosomes. Now, th these chromosomes are on a, on a larger scale. So, for example, Down syndrome is caused by trisomy 21 syndrome. But there's a trisomy 18, there's a trisomy 13. There's different chromosomal disorders that can, that can present. So the chromosomal disorders. Now, these can be caused by environmental factors in, in parents, such as being exposed to radiation. But normally there's an abnormal number of chromosomes, or sometimes uh, it's not just an abnormal number, there's what you call a translocation. Where um, part of a chromosome tags onto another chromosome. So this sometimes happens in Down syndrome, where it's not actually a trisomy 21 syndrome, they just have an extra bit of chromosome. And uh, that causes the characteristic features of Down syndrome. Or there can be abnormalities in sex chromosome numbers. That would be a Klinefelter syndrome, for example, where there's an XXY. And the, uh, the boys have small testes and are infertile, sometimes breast development. And uh, in, in females, uh, some, some girls are only born with one X chromosome. And this causes what we call a... Uh, this causes Turner syndrome. So they're born with one X chromosome, so they only have 45 chromosomes. And these girls are um, usually short in stature and sometimes have webbing of the neck and they often don't sexually mature as well. So I'm starting to go into too much detail. So, so without going into detail too much, um, <clears throat> we see that the endogenous are from inside and these endogenous factors um, can affect the well-being of the individual from inside. So the only true endogenous factors are the genetic factors. But endogenous factors in disease, the endogenous factors arise from outside the individual. So mostly when we're talking about disease etiology, we're talking about exogenous factors. Exogenous factors. And we'll look at these exogenous factors in the next clip.